Walsa, welcome to the 2021 Ireland 101 Global Fitzgerald Family Online Gathering, brought to you by Limerick City and County Council. I'm Megan Scully and I'll be here with you for the next while as we go back and visit some of your ancestral homes and learn more about the Fitzgerald family. I'm a Galway girl, but a Limerick lady. I first came to Limerick in 2007 to study in the University of Limerick and have to say it is one of the best university campuses in all of Ireland. I returned here five years ago and I can tell you Limerick is an absolutely wonderful place to live, but also to visit. So now, there are over 301,000 Fitzgerald family members from all across the world. And some of you have gotten in touch with us. From the Netherlands to England, to Wales, to South Africa, Australia and USA, including North Carolina, Colorado, Florida, Maine and Connecticut to name but a few. Coming up, we're going to hear from the Irish Family History Centre who have done some extensive research on the Fitzgerald family name. And they've also done work on names such as Tom Cruise and former President Barack Obama, who both have Irish roots. Now for the next while, we're going to hear from Fitzgerald family members. You're also going to get a tour of the Fitzgerald Desmond Castle in Adair, County Limerick. Not only that, but Bruffin County Limerick is a very special place and it is the ancestral home of John Fitzgerald Kennedy, aka JFK. And we're going to learn more about his family and his connection to Bruff in a little while. So the 25th of September, 2022, we want to welcome the Fitzgerald clan from all across the world to County Limerick to Adair. We want to welcome you back here, whether you've been here before or else maybe you're coming for the very first time and you want to bring your family and friends back to show them where you came from and of course, to meet more of the Fitzgeralds. So for now, sit back, relax, and let's learn more about the Fitzgerald clan. Now we're going to hear from Pat Daly, CEO of Limerick City and County Council. Hello, I'm Pat Daly, Chief Executive of Limerick City and County Council. And I'm delighted to welcome you all to the 2021 Fitzgerald Online Clan Gathering. It's amazing to think 302,000 Fitzgeralds are part of the clan. And we're delighted to be part of your gathering this year that has been held virtually because of the COVID-19 restrictions. We do send our best wishes to all of you. We do hope you are staying well, and we do hope you enjoy your virtual gathering. And we are really excited to welcome you all next year to Limerick, of which many of you are from. So enjoy the day, enjoy the event, and we look forward to seeing you in 2022. We are now going to hear from MEP, former Tanishta, and former Minister for Justice. It's Francis Fitzgerald. Hello, I'm Frances Fitzgerald speaking to you from the European Parliament office in Dublin. I'm a member of the European Parliament uh, for Dublin City and County. I've previously been Minister for Justice and Minister for Business and Minister for Children in Ireland and also Deputy Prime Minister. My husband Michael Fitzgerald is from County Clare and his ancestors were from County Tipperary. They were stonemasons who came to work in County Clare. It's great to be speaking to you all virtually, but it would be really lovely to meet you in person and celebrate the achievements of the Fitzgerald clan around the world. In the meantime, I send you greetings and best wishes uh, to all members of the Fitzgerald clan. We are now going to hear from Mary Fitzgerald, who is the owner of the Woodlands Hotel in Adair, and she hosted the 2013 Fitzgerald Family Gathering. Well, hello everybody, and welcome to the most authentic Norman castle in Europe. This is a 12th century castle, the home of the Fitzgeralds for many, many centuries. This is absolutely a beautiful castle, so beautifully restored, here in the most picturesque village, Ireland's prettiest village, Adair County, Limerick. Fitzgerald, the name, comes from Gaelic, Mark Gerald, son of Gerald. The Geraldine Fitzgeralds were a really, really strong clan. So, ladies and gentlemen, as I welcome you to my castle. The Fitzgerald clan were very, very well-to-do people. 
They obviously built their castle on the bridge of the river in Adair, or Dara, Bridge of the Oak. It's surrounded by oak trees in this area here. They were very well to do, as I said. They were able to afford to have three monasteries with the Franciscan Monastery, the Augustinian Monastery, and the Trinitarian Abbey. So to have been able to support three monasteries was incredible in those times. But then they knew how to party as well. And in 2013, they, uh, we had lots of medieval games here. Uh, we had archery, falconry, and in 2022, we have a lot more planned for you. These medieval games are great fun and everybody can participate. It's amazing. Well, I'm in the heart of this magnificent castle. Look at the space inside. Loads of room for the clans gathering. They were great entertainers. They absolutely loved parties and loved to have um, people around them sharing their great food and wine. This is the kitchen. I wouldn't like to be catering for all the groups of people that visit this castle from this kitchen. This was their fridge, uh, a cave where they kept everything cold. And this was their cooker. Imagine trying to cook for all those large groups of people. But they probably just had an animal on the roastery with a big stick of wood through it. I can just, my imagination goes wild when I come in here. Oh my head, oh my head, oh my God. The people back then were so much smaller than we are now. But look at this magnificent other courtyard. In 2013, we had the banquet here. They danced, Irish dances, and they had great fun. So in 2022, when our time will come, if you can't dance, we'll teach you how to dance. We'll show you how to dance, and we'll do it all over again. On the 29th of June, 2013, I hosted a Fitzgerald clan banquet in these very grounds. No running water, no electricity, no mobile phone coverage, no nothing. But we had an amazing evening. It all started in this beautiful courtyard here. We had the best of mead made locally for us. And we had buglers, jesters, and in this very spot here with these beautiful yew trees, uh, they made bows and arrows. And they used the yew tree because it was so strong. And they went up in the battlements and they shot the arrows to protect themselves from the enemy. But we had the most wonderful evening here with jesters and jostling and just great medieval fun, which we're going to have again in 2022. So I'm just wondering right now, which Fitzgerald is going to end up in the dungeon and what they're going to have to do to bail themselves out. I am sure we'll have a candidate for this place when the time comes. Well, this was their dining room. As you can see, it's a large area. They were always wonderful hosts, party and welcoming people like all the Fitzgeralds. I commissioned this special mug in 2013 so we could drink the mead, eat, drink and be merry was the motto of the Fitzgeralds always always welcoming large groups of people and enjoying their company and having fun. Well, as I exit through the port of Cullis, this was what they dropped. An incredible piece of engineering at the time. This was dropped to stop the enemy coming through, to get themselves more time to get armed up and be able to fight. So, in 2013, when we did our gathering in this place, we were all in medieval costume. You have a year to get your costume organized, so please plan to bring your costume when you come. And the colors of blue and green and all the medieval colors and fun and excitement. So you have one year now to get yourself ready and get yourself organized for this. So as I bid you all farewell, till we meet again soon in 2022. Now we're going to hear from the president of the Irish Hotel Federations. It's Elena Fitzgerald. From one Fitzgerald to another, no matter what part of the globe you're in, just to say we're missing you. I am Elena Fitzgerald, the president of the Irish Hotels Federation, and we can't wait to get back to welcoming our guests. And there's going to be a particular red carpet welcome to all our Fitzgerald family, cousins throughout the globe. 
when it's safe to travel again. So many great Fitzgerald experiences await you. We saw some fantastic experiences as part of the gathering. And it's these things that drive us on in terms of our next visit and planning it with such great energy and enthusiasm. So for now, just to say, we miss you. We can't wait to welcome you back. Slong of all. We are now absolutely honored to have a very special message from the first cousin of President John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Hi, I'm Tom Fitzgerald in Denver, Colorado, wanting to say hello to my extended family in Bruff, Ireland, where there is a center in town named after my great-grandfather, Thomas Fitzgerald, as well as a theater named after my grandfather, John F. Honey Fitz Fitzgerald. JFK was named after Honey Fitz, and I hope if you're traveled to Ireland that you'll make a stop in Bruff. Hi, I'm Mike Fitzgerald from Bruff, fifth cousin to the Boston Fitzgeralds. JFK's great-grandfather Thomas Fitzgerald was born here and in 1852 he immigrated to Boston. We in Bruff are very proud of this connection and if anyone is interested in the family history, it would be worth coming to our town and visiting the Thomas Fitzgerald Centre, walk the Fitzgerald Trail or just have your photo taken with this lovely statue. Thank you. We are now going to Bruff in County Limerick, the ancestral home of President John Fitzgerald Kennedy, and we are going to hear from Bridget Hayes. Bridget Hayes, Secretary of Bruff Grange Mianus Community Council. Bruff is in County Limerick, Ireland. Greetings to all the Fitzgeralds, wherever you may be. I'm standing here beside one of your greatest ancestors, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. John Fitzgerald Kennedy's great-grandfather, Thomas Fitzgerald, left Bruff for Boston in 1852 and took with him the family Bible. His son, John Francis Fitzgerald, who was best known as Honey Fitz, was mayor of Boston for several terms. And Honey Fitz's daughter was Rose Fitzgerald Kennedy, the mother of JFK. But it would take too long to enumerate all the experiences that a visitor to this area might enjoy. Just Google or log on to Facebook pages or websites of Bruff Community, Locker, the Kennedy Rooms, Thomas Fitzgerald Centre, uh, Ballyhowra Country, just to mention just a few of the areas where you can find more information about this area. In the meantime, keep safe and well. We are now going to hear from Fiona in the Irish Family History Centre and they have done some extensive research on the Fitzgerald family name. So here's a brief history of the Fitzgerald surname. Fitzgerald is a Norman surname. It derives from the Norman French feel the son of, and Gerald, the name of a common ancestor. The family originates in Normandy, in northern France. As a family, the Geraldines, later as a lineage, were one of the most important groups in medieval Ireland. If we limit ourselves to those Geraldines who use the surname Fitzgerald in Ireland, by 1600, we can trace at least 117 landowning branches securely linked to the main stems. And this tells us they were very successful conquistadors here in Ireland. The eponymous Gerald was Gerald of Windsor, a Norman baron in South Wales, who died in 1116. His early death left three sons, William of Carew, David the Bishop, and Morris. Morris Fitzgerald, the youngest and poorest son, was only eight years old when his father died. He trained as a knight from his early teens. From the age of 22, he fought to suppress Welsh rebellion against the Normans. In 1169, Morris Fitzgerald began the late second chapter of his life, taking part in the invasion of Ireland. He was a seasoned military leader, with 39 years combat experience under his belt. 
Between 1169 until his death seven years later in 1176, he campaigned through Ireland. And it's from this Morris, all of, through his sons are descended most of the various Fitzgerald lines in Ireland. This Gerald was the ancestor to the um, Earls of Kildare, the Barons of Offaly, obtaining lands in Limerick and Kildare. The youngest sons were Robert and Thomas. Robert was ancestor to the Fitzmaurice Lords of Kerry, while Thomas was ancestor to the Earls of Desmond and their different offshoots, including the Knights of Glynn and the White Knight or Fitzgibbons, also present in Limerick. Let's look first of all at the Earls of Desmond. Thomas, son of Morris Fitzgerald, built his first stronghold at Shannon in West Limerick. And from Shannon comes the Desmond's battle cry, Shanna the Boo. Later strongholds of the family included the castles of Castle Island in Kerry and Askeaton and Rathkeel in Limerick. The origins of the later Desmond Lordship were set down by Thomas's son, John Fitz Thomas Fitzgerald. He married a wealthy heiress and he acquired extensive lands throughout Munster. Further acquisitions in the 14th and early 15th centuries saw the Desmond Lordship grow to include all of Kerry, most of Limerick, the western half of Waterford, and parts of East and North Cork, as well as lands around Clonmel and elsewhere in South Tipperary. In the process, the family became the leading political power in Munster, but they also became partly Gaelicised. They began to adopt Irish customs and traditions and Irish law. Later prominent earls included Garroid Irla, a celebrated Gaelic poet who died in 1398, and Thomas Fitzjames Fitzgerald, the earl who attempted to establish Ireland's first university at Drada in 1462. Garroid Irla is also associated in legend with the Geraldine Castle of Loch Gur in East Limerick. He said every year to appear, or he is said to appear on his ghostly white charger every seven years. In 1536, at the time of the Geraldine Rebellion, the Kildare Earls, close kinsmen of the Desmond Fitzgeralds, were attainted. They lost their lands. Their former castle at Adair was now granted to the Desmond Fitzgeralds for the first time. The most famous Earl was probably Gerald, the 15th and last true Earl. He led a major war against growing English influence in Mon Munster between 1564 to 1583. In 1584, he died in a cattle raid in the Kerry Mountains. Let's put this in context. One of the tactics used by the English in the Desmond Rebellion was to adopt a scorched earth policy, destroying crops, killing herds in an effort to starve the rebels into submission. But of course, this is a very imprecise way of doing things. You can't really distinguish between the innocent civilians and the rebels. As a consequence, by the time of the final surrender of the Irish, it's estimated that probably a third of the native population of Munster were exterminated in what was certainly a campaign of ethnic cleansing. Earl Gerald himself was killed, probably by mistake, while he was conducting a cattle raid to try and get food for his dwindling soldiery. His killers were in fact tenants of the Earls at Castle Drum near Tralee in County Kerry. In order to claim the reward for his capture, they decapitated him, they cut off his head and sent it in a bag to Tralee, where it was placed on a spike above the town gate. This family, the O'Murriartis, was subsequently known as the Bagmen. Let's look at some of the offshoots of the Desmond Fitzgeralds, um, some of whom also carry the name 
Fitzgerald. We're going to look at the Knights of Kerry, of Glynn and the White Knight. These three lines descended from illegitimate sons of John Fitzthomas of Shannon, who died in 1261. And they were all sired. The mothers were wives of native Irish chieftains. From John descended the Knights of Glynn. From Gilbert, the Fitzgibbon, White Knights. And from Morris, the Knights of Kerry. And each one of these lines was associated with a colour, white, black and green. And this suggests something of the atmosphere of jousting and of knights on horseback in battle. The Knights of Glynn, the first of whom was Sir John Fitzjohn, who died after 1309, originally occupied the Glynn district of West Limerick. They later came to acquire lordships of Clenlish, Kaledi and Kenry, in the middle district of Limerick, the mid part of Limerick. Their chief castles were located at Glynn and Castletown Kenry. The Knights of Glynn were firm supporters of the Earls of Desmond in their wars with the English and were later prominent in rebellions in the 17th centuries. And yet somehow they managed to stay on the right side of the law and to keep hold of their lands at Glynn while they remained Catholic. There's a colourful story telling how in 1569, when the 15th Knight of Glynn, Thomas Fitzgerald was barbarously executed in Limerick by the English. His mother, who was present at the execution, seized her son's head and cradled it. A later knight during a famine in the 1730s led his tenants on cattle raiding expeditions in order to feed his tenantry. Later generations were forced to conform, to adopt Protestantism in order to retain what was left of their estates, much reduced after decades in rebellion. The last night of Glynn, the Honourable Desmond Fitzgerald sadly died in 2011 and the title is now extinguished. His daughter runs Glynn House as a boutique hotel. Let's look briefly at the White Knights. They possessed large estates in Limerick and Cork. They go by the name of Fitzgibbon, but Fitzgibbon is one of the offshoots of Fitzgerald. Morris Fitzgibbon, the first White Knight, was the grandson of John Fitzgerald, the first Baron Desmond. He accompanied his cousin, the Earl of Desmond on military exp expeditions into Scotland and also Wales, and he served as his Lieutenant General. And in 1333, Morris Fitzgibbon was knighted in the field by Edward III after a famous victory against the Scots. Some famous Fitzgeralds include F. Scott Fitzgerald, the renowned American novelist, this Fitzgerald had a turbulent private life. He died as a relatively young man in 1940 without having achieved significant fame um, or gained much of a reputation in his own life lifetime. The Great Gatsby is today considered one of the great novels of American literature and it was made into a film on um, a number of times. Um, Rose Fitzgerald was the matriarch of the powerful Kennedy clan of Irish Americans. Her sons included President John F. Kennedy, the first Irish American to become, well, we shouldn't really say the first Irish American, the first Irish American Catholic to become president and who was assassinated in 1963. And um, also his brothers, Robert and Ted, Rose Fitzgerald was born in Boston's North End in 1890. She was the eldest child of John Fitzgerald, known as Honey Fitz, the mayor of Boston. The Fitzgerald family emigrated two generations earlier from Brough in Limerick, arriving in the US almost penniless, and they built themselves up and established their dynasty within a short number of generations. Ella Fitzgerald, known as the First Lady of Song, 
was one of Americans, America's great jazz vocalists. She recorded more than 200 albums um, and over 2,000 songs during her career. Among her many awards were 13 gra uh, Grammys, and she famously sang with Louis Armstrong. Again, another, of, another one of the greats of early jazz. And let's finish with a mention of Edward Fitzgerald. He was a noted English poet and writer of the, uh, a writer who flourished in the 19th century. He's most famous for translating the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam and for the lines expressing what it is to be perfectly content in life. A jug of wine, a loaf of bread, and thou beside me. Thank you so much to Fiona, but if you want to research your family, go to the Irish genealogy section on ireland101.com. Fill out your research details and that will go to Fiona and her team to assess how they can help you. Now we're going to hear from Laura Ryan of Limerick City and County Council and she's going to tell us all about the virtual St. Patrick's Day Parade. Hello, I'm Laura Ryan, Head of Marketing and Communications at Limerick City and County Council. And I'm delighted to join and welcome Fitzgerald family members from all over the world for this exciting virtual event. My job is to sell Limerick both here at home domestically and internationally. And despite the challenges of COVID, we've had a really busy year uh, launching our new Limerick brand and extending an invitation to the rest of the world to come and visit us when it's safe to do so. Limerick's brand is Atlantic Edge European Embrace and it's all about our county's warmth and its resilience and it's really a sign of the newfound con confidence that we have in Limerick now about who we are, uh, what we are and also what we have to offer. So we're coming up to the St. Patrick's Festival and unfortunately we can't host our physical parade and international band championship this year. However, we are determined to still mark the occasion and bring the festivities directly into your homes virtually. So we'd love if you could come and join us on the 17th of March to celebrate our festival. Um, you can search for Limerick St. Patrick's Festival on uh, Facebook, on Instagram and on Twitter for all the details. And we've got a really fantastic concert that evening that you won't want to miss. So I think it's super that we are celebrating the Fitzgerald's family connections to Limerick. I am really, really looking forward to meeting some of you um, in person at a physical gathering um, when it's safe to do so, hopefully not too far away. And uh, I would really looking forward to do that. So to keep in touch with all things Limerick, you can visit us on limerick.ie um, for all the news from home and uh, enjoy yourselves and I hope to see you all soon. All the best, bye bye. We're now going to hear from Rory Corbett from the trade and investment team at Limerick City and County Council and he is heading up the diaspora engagement. Hello to all the Fitzgerald family. Rory Corbett here from Limerick City and County Council. I'd like to talk to you for a little bit about diaspora. Diaspora communities are something that we care deeply about here in Limerick. As far back as 1690, just after the historic signing of the Treaty of Limerick, approximately 15,000 people from Limerick left for continental Europe in an event which became later known as the Flight of the Wild Geese. When we talk about Limerick diaspora, we're talking about people who are natives of Limerick, but also migrants and descendants of migrants whose family and sense of belonging have been shaped by their migration experience and background. It's estimated that Limerick diaspora may now exceed over 3 million people worldwide. So there's literally millions of our ancestors scattered throughout the world, carrying the DNA of Limerick with them wherever they go. Today, Limerick is a vibrant living city. Many household names of global enterprise have large and important operations here, connecting them to Europe and the rest of the world. Our research would suggest that 20% of our diaspora community are keen to connect with Limerick for business and investment opportunities, and we're here to facilitate those connections. International students and sport and tourism play an important role in the everyday life of Limerick. In each of those cases, it's our global network and connectivity that is critical to our success. 
I'm very pleased to be working on an important new initiative in respect of Limerick's engagement with this diaspora by creating a first global Limerick diaspora strategy. We hope to have this ready to publish in the coming months. As part of the development of this strategy, we would like to hear from people who are natives of Limerick or people who have an affinity to Limerick through ancestry, education, sport or other interests, but now live in another country or indeed elsewhere in Ireland. Details of our diaspora strategy can be found by following us on Twitter at Limerick Global or by visiting limerick.ie. Our people are at the heart of everything we do here in Limerick City and County Council. Our vision is to have a single global community, people united by bonds of friendship, family and history. We're delighted to support this event and our friends at Ireland 101 and bring together so many Fitzgerald family members from right across the globe and connect you with communities here in Limerick. Thank you. So now to all the families watching from all across the world, we cannot wait to welcome you here to Limerick City and County. From Loch Gur to Loch Derg, we have castles and cathedrals. We have some of the finest food producers in all of Ireland, and we might just produce some of the best Guinness as well. Also, Shannon Airport is just down the road, as we say here in Ireland, 20 minutes from the heart of Limerick City, where I sit right now. You can take a stroll around the three bridges. You can get a kayak down the River Shannon. And you know what? You can show your family where your ancestors have come from. Maybe you want to make it a romantic trip. How about proposing on the towers in King John's Castle? Or if it's music you're into, we have trad, jazz, rock, pop, and a bit of rap as well. You name it, it's all here on offer in Limerick. And what's great about Limerick as well, we're pretty much in the middle of everywhere. Killarney's not that far away. Dublin's just a couple of hours away, or you might want to head up to Galway. And of course, we're nestled along the wild Atlantic way. I can tell you, this is an experience you do not want to miss. So why not come to Limerick and have a very special experience that is catered just for you and your loved ones, a boutique experience. Get to live in the Limerick that I currently live in right now and see it in all its glory. And now it is time to chat to the women that can make this all possible for you. They are 30 years plus in this industry and they have been working across the Shannon region and Limerick and they can set up the most amazing itinerary just for you and your loved ones. Neva and Michelle are from Travel at Ireland 101. And of course, the first thing we have to ask about is travel restrictions, but it's looking like 2022 could be the year that you could be here experiencing all that Limerick has to offer. Ladies, do tell us, what do we know about the travel restrictions? Yes, Megan, well, there are currently um, restrictions for travel into Ireland. Um, now is a good time to start planning a trip to Ireland in 2022 or 2023. Um, and of course we extend a warm welcome, welcome to the gathering. Um, as you mentioned, Limerick is the perfect base. Um, it's the gateway to the World Atlantic Way. Um, it has the Shannon Estuary and it borders um, the counties of Clare, um, Kerry, Cork and Tipperary um, and so from trips to Bunratty Castle, uh, private tours, um, craft gin tasting, um, there's so much um, on offer. Um, horse riding, horse racing and of course water sports on the glorious lakes, rivers or seas. Um, so also many hidden gems and um, as people know, the hospitality um, in Ireland is world renowned and many of the hoteliers um, in the region um, have been in business for generations. So um, warm hospitality um, is, is here to find. So uh, to contact us, please email um, travel at ireland101.com. Um, uh, we can answer any questions you may have. And then um, from there, we will go to uh, organizing a telephone call with you and um, then gather all the information needed for a perfect itinerary um, in Ireland. Um, there is a, a great appetite for uh, reconnection and intergenerational travel. 
um, because we've been apart for so long. So um, we look forward to welcoming you to Ireland. So Neve and Michelle, if we'll say families want to travel over, maybe it's couples or maybe it's, you know, smaller groups of friends, what exactly can you offer them here in Limerick City and County and what could be included in their itinerary? Yes, Megan, what are the highlights? Um, I think Limerick itself is the highlight. Um, where it's placed, uh, where it is and what it offers. Um, it's ideally placed um, as the gateway to the Wild Atlantic Way. And it's also part of Ireland's Hidden Heartlands. So that makes it just such a treasure chest of amazing things to see and do and experience. Um, from the very young to the more mature, and, you know, whether you're coming individually um, as a couple in a family or, you know, some of you might like together uh, come together and, you know, do something special for yourselves, like uh, play golf or, you know, enjoy our gardens or learn more about our food and drink uh, in the area. So Limerick City itself um from the Georgian Quarter to the many, many great um, uh, establishments that really have to be enjoyed. And we very much recommend that that's what you do, that you do, uh, you know, take part in life here. Um, you know, we've been a long time waiting um, to travel and uh, we've been a long time waiting to welcome people. So uh, we would encourage people to uh, you know, learn how to play hurling. Hurling is very important in Limerick. Uh, learn how to set dance, you know, do a bit of surfing. Um, it's all there for um, every age and every type of interest. Um, so the city of Limerick and the county then have incredible neighbouring counties. So you can see a lot um, in a short time while you're here and really enjoy, you know, travel, but not in an exhausting way, um, connections and reconnecting and also just discovering, um, you know, just discovering all of the things that are literally here on our doorstep. Now you've all heard about Limerick City and County and I know you are only dying to pack your bags and get on over here and experience all that we have mentioned. Well, we've got some good news for you. Fitzgerald's September 25th, 2022. That is going to be your family gathering. And the Ryan's Limerick City Centre, June 2022 is what we have for you. And don't worry, the Collins family, we haven't forgotten about you guys either. We have something planning that we're going to share with you very, very shortly. So get in touch with Travel at Ireland 101 for all the details and book your family experience today. So in my introduction, I named out some of the countries from all around the world that the Fitzgeralds are watching and listening in. So now it's time that we hear from some of you. Hello from Yarmouth, Maine. I just found out about Fitzgerald ancestor, Ellen Fitzgerald, who is the mother of Bridget Gleason from Tipperary. So I can't wait to join these new family members at the Fitzgerald gathering and hopefully learn more about this distant relative. Take care, bye. Hi, this is Bridget Fitzgerald and I'm coming to you from Hatfield in Hertfordshire. Uh, originally, the family came from Fina in County Limerick and my dad moved over to the UK in the 1950s. Um, before that, everybody was over in Ireland and it'd be lovely to make contact with anybody who perhaps is a Fitzgerald from Fina. I can go back as far as my grandfather, no, my great-grandfather Morris who was born around 1801 but unfortunately I can't go back any further so if anybody knows Morris I'd love to hear from you. Enjoy the event and thanks to everybody for making it possible. So now we're going to hear from Dr Des Fitzgerald, former president of the University of Limerick. Hello everyone, my name is Des Fitzgerald. Um, until recently, I was president of the University of uh, Limerick 
its fifth uh, president, uh, not, however, from Limerick. Uh, my mother's family was from Limerick, uh, the O'Donovan's on uh, Connell Avenue. And I can remember uh, many summers spent in Limerick and uh, in uh, Kilkee when I was younger. Um, but I spent most of my professional life in the US and in uh, Dublin. Um, I was persuaded to uh, become head of the university uh, because it is a really fabulous uh, institution, uh, a great university. Uh, now, uh, a little over 50 years old, it started in 1969, which is the handful of students entering the National Institute of Higher Education. Uh, and then in 1989, uh, it became uh, a university. Now it has uh, 16,000 uh, students, 12,000 undergraduate students, um, and there are a little over 3,500 students that uh, live on the campus uh, in uh, a number of villages that are uh, scattered around the campus. Uh, it's a, a fabulous place to come and visit. Uh, it's in Castle Troy, so easy to get to if you're visiting uh, Limerick. Come out, spend the afternoon, bring your family, stroll around. Um, it's uh, 330 acres spread over the, the two counties, Limerick and Clare, uh, with a bridge across the Shannon. So it's a, a really lovely uh, way to spend an afternoon. Um, and get to see and know uh, the, uh, the University of Limerick. Anyway, uh, I'll finish there. Um, I hope you have a great gathering and I look forward to seeing all the videos come together. Greetings and well wishes to all Fitzgeralds around the world. My name is John Fitzgerald. I'm currently residing in Port Elizabeth, South Africa. I'm looking for information on my great-great-grandfather, Robert Fitzgerald, who was born 17th of September, nine, uh, 1797. Uh, he married a Mary Connor. They lived in Leverley, Rathdoney, Laos. Queen's County. They had four sons, five daughters. Hans Caulfield, the, the fourth son, was my, my great-grandfather. He uh, married Anne Sinclair in 1866 and immigrated to South Africa in 1867. Well, that's it from the Global Fitzgerald Online Family Gathering for 2021. We hope you enjoyed learning all about your ancestral roots and, of course, the Fitzgerald family from all around the world. And remember, 25th of September 2022, it's the Fitzgerald Family Gathering in Adair in Limerick. And we cannot wait to welcome you here. So whether it's your first visit or maybe you're coming back to bring some family and friends. You've seen Limerick, you've heard all about it. So now you need to come and experience it. So if you want any more information on this gathering, or if you just want some more information on the Fitzgerald family clan, email info at ireland101.com. That's it from us, and we look forward to welcoming you here in 2022.